Hey, everybody. Welcome to a fun show we've got planned for you here this afternoon. It's uh, it's a wonderful Saturday here in Central Florida, and I hope it's the same somewhere, wherever you are, whether what, whatever country or time zone you live in. But uh, yeah, welcome one and all. I see every, you know, many of you in the chat already, Wedding and uh, Mr. Moore and Ladwig, Mr. Red Jack, uh, number one Marvel fan. Hey, nice to see you. I sent you a text through uh, your uh, calf page about a week ago. Uh, Tom, and I haven't heard from you, man. You should uh, check that if you um, haven't. Yes, the band Spidey shirt is on. I'm the only one that has has this shirt. So, um, yeah, admire it while you can because you'll never be able to own, own one yourself. Um, yeah, the uh, T Public um, Disney band hammer happened, you know, mm -hmm. immediately from putting that one out there. So this is the only one you can ever uh, see or potentially own. <laughs> I'll, I Maybe I'd be willing to sell it. So, uh, so yeah, I've got Mr. Dexter Vines on with me again. We're doing our third show. Uh, I think the last one we did was uh, early in the fall, maybe like last September. So, uh, you know, it's been a few months and we're ready to have at it again. We've got 19 artworks for sale. So uh, let me bring Dex in and we'll we'll get to talking. Hey, Dexter, how you doing, man? Hello. Good, nice. good. how you doing? I, yeah, I'm pretty good, man. You know, it's... Uh, um, it's it's been a wild uh, you know few months around here, but but by and large I'm doing pretty well. It's uh you know we've we've got so many so many things we're working on. I can't even get to tell you, but calf is uh, yeah, is, yeah. is growing by leaps and bounds, and it's been uh, it's pretty been pretty fun the last few months. But how, how you been? Pretty good, pretty good. Just trying to keep busy. Just you know, as as a freelance artist, you know, we always trying to hustle and and stay busy. And just wrapped up uh, four issues of Mandalorian. And uh, so I got some more Star Wars stuff I'm going to be doing probably, I guess, next month. But in the meantime, just, you know, staying on the grind doing this. I'm going to um, Indianapolis next week for a convention. Oh, cool. Um, Which so, show is that? Yeah, just I think it's Indianapolis Comic Con, I believe. It's okay. my first time going to it. So, All right. But I believe it's Indianapolis Comic Con, I believe. I lived in Northeast Ohio for a long time, and I don't remember. I, I never went to it. I've never, never knew. Yeah, yeah. That, well, I think every weekend now there's like two or three big shows. Like I think we said before, every every weekend there's a there's a nice bunch of shows every weekend everywhere. It seems. That's very true. Are you going to be at Heroes this year? Uh, likely, more okay. than likely. So. I know they're still posting guests. I mean, yeah, they do like three or four rounds of announcements over there, and I I didn't think I had seen your name on the on the list yet. Yeah, yeah, not yet, not yet. I was thinking about taking this year off. I've done it so many times, but I was like, but I always have a good time. Yeah. So, but I, more than likely, I would be there. So I would, I would say that. So. Are there, you know, aside from the Indianapolis show, do you have any any firm commitments to any other shows this year? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing was it Tampa Bay Comic Con? Oh, shoot. In August. I'm I do know that one. To... Not too far Let's see. Him. Yeah, yeah, it put me on the spot. So yeah, I'll be close. Um, <laughs> where else am I going? There's a few more shows. I'm going to Phoenix, I think in May. Um, so, but a few shows. But yeah, I think I got about five or six lined up for sure. So. All right. When you go to some of those shows, do they ever try to pair you with one of your pencilers? You know, just to kind of like keep a team together, or at least you know, at the same show. Sometimes, yeah, like me and Georges would do a show. They'll usually set us right by each other or right near. Like back when me and Ed used to work together, they would sit us together all the time. So mm -hmm. it just depends. Yeah, if I'm if I was working with somebody on a more on a regular basis, they'll they'll and we at the show they'll tend to do that. But that's about it. Well, that makes sense. So, yeah. so you've been busy with Star Wars art of late, huh? So yeah, a little bit little Star Wars stuff. So yeah, that's always fun playing in the uh the, the Lucas verse. So Yeah, I mean I think we talked about that the last time. Is isn't it there like there's always a delay getting your artwork back from that because you know just Yeah, yeah. Well, because they have to see it. And it's just the delay working on anything Lucas art because they have to approve everything. So um it's like when George's would pencil the issue, he would send it in for approval, it'd be this long wait before I would get it. And then, so usually by the time I would start after the first issue, by the time I started the second issue, Georges was already working on the third issue because there had been so much time waiting to get it approved. Mm -hmm. So I would get the, but the good thing is I got the whole issue all at one time. So right. that was a good thing. I mean, it makes sense that they would uh, approve the pencils before sending them on to you, but have you ever had to like 
modify any of the oh yeah lots pieces? of times <laughs> yeah <laughs> lots of times they don't see things until it's inked of course and then it sticks out like oh that was that yeah we didn't we didn't catch that can you you know fix that even though it was in the pencils but this is, i think some things once they're inked and filled in you know it kind of stands out more and they're like right. oh whoa we didn't catch that before so <laughs> But yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of back and forth. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, so you know, along with the Star Wars stuff, I mean, like I said, I think we talked back in September. So, has it only been Star Wars work that you've had since that time, or have you had any other um, projects? Uh, kind of yeah, yeah, I think it's all been Star Wars since then. Um, I just because we just wrapped issue four, right when issue one came out. So it's been a couple of weeks now. Okay. So. I'm going to be doing, I think, some Ahsoka stuff coming up, but so, but yeah, I've been put, putting out fillers. So, but in the meantime, like I say, doing stuff, going to conventions and, you know, my website, stuff like that. So it was always, there's always something to do. Sure. Of course. Um, I mean, with the, well, Ahsoka would be a good uh, title to work on. I'm sure that uh, a lot of Star Wars fans would be interested in yeah, anything. Yeah related to that character given, given the definitely popularity of the show and the, and just the you know the the pack uh, the past animated uh flicks with her in it um yeah yeah and then that... said, yeah the first season of the show so mm -hmm. yeah so she's a hot commodity at the moment so exactly so i mean do you, do you tackle projects that you know differently in any way like you know like you, you've worked on buffy a little bit in the past uh, of course and I mean, do you feel any extra weight on you when you have to tackle a project that has, uh, you know, that kind of like appeal, you know? No, not really. It just depends on the pencil. Like if it's a new somebody I've never worked with before. Mm -hmm. But George's, we've been, you know, collabing back and forth, you know, for forever. I think we we got into the industry around the same time. And um, so we've worked on and off for almost 30 years. So when I work with George's, it's, we kind of knew. You know, if he tries something, he'll he'll kind of point it out. But you know, other than that, you know, we kind of we kind of know how each other work at this point, or it's like when like, me and Ed were working together, like Lee know. and Williams. You guys have the uh, you know you, you you know what to expect from him, and he knows what to give right. you the best right. stuff, out of him, right? So, but yeah, you work with somebody new. I generally, I may look at you know what how other inkers have approached them, mm -hmm. and then I'll kind of look at the pencils and see what kind of comes to me. But I always kind of like to look and see what how how other artists, how other inkers have uh, tackled their work, just to kind of, you know, see for myself. Now, are there, uh, so so in a case like that, for instance, I mean, are there, uh, you know, it's, and it's a penciler that's worked with a dozen inkers. I mean, are there inkers whose who's work you trust, you know, to kind of look at as a reference point? You know, maybe, you know, I'm not saying don't, you know, I'm not concerned about who the people you don't trust, but I mean, are there like inkers that you always know do a great <laughs> yeah, job? That, that you know, and who are they? Prefer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so, you know, so that when you're trying to get a buy, you know, a feel for how to handle a new penciler, I mean, yeah, which, yeah. which inkers that, that are within your like peer group would you like look to to see how they handle the particular penciler? Right. So it's just, it, it depends. Like uh, Rick Leonardi, I love Rick stuff. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think we got a, a couple of Rick pages. But I always thought his best inker was was it Jesse Doppler I'm pretty sure I butchered his last name, but uh, I know it's Jesse something. But they they work together, and I, I love his inks. He's like my favorite inker mm. over Rick's work. Okay. Um, so, but I think, but I think a lot of people kind of have like you know some people prefer like I remember when Terry Austin would ink Art Adams. You know they were great together um, uh, back in the day. Um, so it was always interesting to see when Art Adams would do the X Men annuals, mm -hmm. which inker they would pair him with. It was always interesting to see how the different inkers would would uh, would tackle his work. And this was at the point when I was just trying to you know hone my skills to get into comics. So I was always interested in you know which inkers were inking him because he was like my favorite penciler growing up like that. So um, it's interesting. It's cool years later to be doing it. The you know the same thing myself now. Interesting. So, like when you look back at you know Longshot, for instance, you know one of Art's uh, you know early projects, and he yeah. had so he had many inkers on that book. I mean, it's kind many. of many. Yeah, yeah. I remember Wilson that, was in there. It was right. So, do you find that interesting that they were able to kind of keep the consistency throughout that book, so that the, you know the readers almost couldn't yeah, tell? Yeah. 
I mean, have you ever yeah, worked on a yeah. project like that really before? Cool. Yeah. Have you, have you had to do I'm something? I'm pretty like sure that? I have, or it's been just like a bunch of yeah. I'm pretty sure it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Um, especially I'm I'm pretty sure back in the heyday when things are really just kind of a lot of projects were just getting thrown at you. It's been a lot of that, but not lately. Usually, you know, if there's more than one, if there's more, you might have two inkers on the book. You know, and that's you know if the project gets behind. But rare would you have like in a big, you know, kind of amalgamation of inkers like that now, nowadays. Right. Uh, especially yeah, since a lot of pencilers think their own work these days anyway. So that that's true. I mean, do you uh, do you ever regret some of the pencilers that ink their own stuff that it, it, it might mean that you don't get the opportunity to ever ink their work? I mean, is that everything true well from a <laughs> financial <laughs> well, <then> then yes <laughs> but i as an artist i definitely understand wanting to do your own do it all and right you know, have control of it so so i definitely understand it that way i wish it wasn't more like that mm -hmm. but i totally i totally get it so. yeah because you're seeing a lot of guys uh you know like nick klein for instance who does uh, you know his, his own inks and ink washes and he likes to you know finish everything right so it's almost yeah. like you know, like you said, they want the original, you know, the penciler wants to have more control over what the finished product looks like. So they are willing to, you know, take the time and put all that effort into it. Yeah. Um, I, we are seeing, I, I feel like we're seeing that a little bit more, more than uh, we did 10, 20 years ago. Definitely. Definitely. I think just because I think they're a more of an artistic, you know, I think you just see more art just in general kind of flowing into to two comics it's just becoming a, a one it's not like yeah we just draw a pencil and ink yeah it's just like we doing ink wash we're doing mixed media you know it's just people are doing a little bit of everything and uh now you add in digital and you know the sky's the limit with that kind of stuff very true now have you ever had to do an ink wash on uh, any finished work that you've done i've done some for like personal stuff but never anything that was published Okay. I've done any ink wash stuff on. Actually, I've I've been trying to play around with it more on my stuff. Um, just being influenced by, you know, a lot of good artists. Um, so I always like to kind of play around. I actually dug out watercolors for the first time in in forever, uh, recently playing around. So uh, but yeah, just an artist, you just want to try and do stuff, especially if I got a little downtime, mm -hmm. you know, I'll I'll play around. That's cool. Do you take commissions through your website? I'm just kind of curious. I mean, when you're if you're ever looking for work on the side when you have downtime, do you do that? I mean, I take or, ink commissions. Ink I generally because yeah. like I do like head pen and ink head sketches, but I generally save that stuff for conventions. Um, mm -hmm. But I do take ink commissions off from my website, and I have in the past. Not I haven't done a whole lot lately, but I've I've done a a, a lot in the past for sure. But so somebody can make an inquiry through the, your website and ask. Yeah, uh, yeah, they just yeah, email me and uh, ask me a question, and I'll just say like, yeah, send me the. Uh, I'll generally ask, give me a, let me know what it looks like. So mm -hmm. I'll send me a JPEG so I can, then I quote them, um, what did it cost to ink it? And then we go from there. Okay, cool. So if anybody's interested in that, you should definitely hit Dex up, right? I mean, that's always, uh, you, know, you know, like you said, there's, there's always going to be downtime in someone's schedule. I mean, it's, it's probably definitely. Not, not too often when you have like three or four books on, on your, uh, uh you know on your plate to ink at the same time right it's, it's right usually... right you know, like i said i tell people like, either i got a lot of work or no work in a way so <laughs> feast or famine know, so when you don't have any work you got to kind of fill that void so mm -hmm. but once you've been in it a while you kind of you kind of know so it is great now that there's so many conventions mm -hmm. um to do it really helps you know um the artists and like myself you know so i know um i can do conventions and stuff like that to kind of feel the the void when in between projects right so. yeah there is definitely a show every weekend from pretty much like what the beginning yeah. of march all the way through definitely yeah, it used to be a summer thing i remember when i first got in industry it was like you know summer months were that was convention season now it's it's all year long now yeah so. I mean, it's a good thing for fans and, and like you said for for pros who uh who want to get out and, and uh, do work i mean there's it's funny there's you know, you always hear of some artists that don't like to do shows at all. You know, they just don't yeah, want to get out, yeah. and uh, uh, they're happier to staying home and yeah, yeah. Stuff that way. So, uh, definitely, which I yeah. get. I understand. You don't want to do all that traveling and bringing all this, lugging all this stuff, and then I know artists who love it. You know, they they that's what they're that's their jam. So mm -hmm. you know, it goes both ways. I can you know, as long as I can take it in moderation. 
you know, give me a, <laughs> give me five or six a year. We, we good. Yeah, that's, that's, fine. that's fair. Every other month, right? It, yeah, take, yeah. Uh, let's see. Winter Powell wanted to say hi. A fellow Atlantan. Hello, Winter. How you doing? Uh, One of these days, Winter's going to join me for a collector interview, I think. <laughs> she thought, I asked her a few months back. Well, I think back when uh, uh, your show, you know, around that time. And she said, when, you know, maybe maybe in a year or two. So uh, the the yeah, invitation yeah. is an open one, Winter. I'd love to love to chat with you because she's been in the in our chats a lot and picked up art from uh, you know several different artists and uh, would uh, love to love to talk with and get a female collector's perspective. We won't, we've only done Definitely. that a few times. There's not there's not enough uh, female yeah, collectors yeah. out there. Um, but you know we were talking about OAX in the in the green room and that was kind of what uh, cool uh, uh, the, for OAX was just that there. There were a lot of spouses that came and there were some spouses that were buying artwork I and mean, I, I met a, mm -hmm. met a few collectors uh, that I hadn't seen before so that was kind of neat you know just to, to actually get uh you know a lot of different perspectives on uh, on collectors at the show and um right. maybe, maybe winter will come to OEX next year uh you know that would be cool because yeah, you know Atlanta's not that far at the end of yeah the day. yeah so yeah we used to make that drive all the time back in the day to MegaCon um before before cross gen bought it um mm -hmm. we, we used to like every year we were driving down to megacon so that was a. Uh, I i tell people i almost feel like you know wrestlers back in the day when they were on the road <laughs> driving to the conventions you know mm -hmm. i remember we drove to a lot of conventions back in the day you know luckily now you know people are willing to fly us out to to shows <laughs> so that, that's nice so. Yeah, de definitely. Yeah, do you know that uh, you know the hotel we're in for uh, OAX is the hotel that uh, MegaCon got started in? We we didn't oh, know okay. that. We didn't know it till that weekend. Jimmy Palmiotti was like, when he told me when he pulled up, he's like, I remember this place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he, so that so and then we asked around and we asked the hotel and they told us, yeah, this is where uh, where MegaCon got its start. Whatever, like you yeah, know, 30, yeah. 30 that's years. awesome. So I feel like you know, so we made a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good times down in Megacon for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I mean actually when I got back into um you know collecting comics and just started collecting artwork, Megacon was the show that um that I started going to as well. You know, it was just fun and it was kind of I'd always take my son and he, you know, so, and it was just a good time. You know, we would yeah, that was like in the early two thousands. So it's a little different show these days, but, but, but back then it was, it was great. I, I discovered that before heroes and, uh, yeah. I, I thought it was, you know, the best thing ever until I discovered heroes you know, right, right. Five right. or so, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Hey, Josh Middleton's in the chat. On a, oh my uh, God, the Josh Middleton, the Josh. The. <laughs> oh my God. Speaking of Florida and cross gen, <laughs> that my guy, Josh Middleton. Oh my goodness. Yes, it so is. You need to do a show with Josh and, and let Josh tell you some tell you some cross gen stories one of these days. Well, I as a matter of fact, I do actually have Josh on. We're gonna do a, a not an artist sale show, but I've got him on a uh, Tuesday the twenty sixth of this month, and he'll be oh, okay. so it'll be kind of a artist interview. Um, awesome. But, but yeah, I figured two hours where we can just BS about his career in comics, and you know he's he's out in in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we hasn't, talked hasn't a few months been... ago. We FaceTime and caught up. So, hey, Josh, tell Tom I said hello. So, <laughs> yeah, no, small world, right? I mean, so definitely. So that's how, where we how... met. We met in in Florida at CrossGen. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. so can you get, give me any tips? What should I? What kind of questions should I be asking Josh when I? When oh I have my spot? goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh maybe, my maybe you should goodness. tell me off the air i don't know but yeah uh, yeah i'm gonna have to do that i have to and i'll have to uh send you some pictures from cross gen i oh. documented my whole year at cross gen and mm -hmm. pictures please and, do that that would be uh that'd be awesome to have some you know i should ask you for that i mean because we that, that would have been fun to see some of uh that but okay you do that yeah. we'll, we'll do it with josh on on uh on, yeah on yeah screen. for sure and, for sure, so that will be fun. I look forward to seeing that. So As do I would I, definitely yeah. have to chime in and, 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 and ask some questions of, of Mr. Middleton. So. Well, he's he's here to harass you too. So, uh, but yeah, that's been fun. We're trying to do uh, you know trying to do more artist uh, interviews and things on the channel. We haven't uh, you know we do the artist sales all the time, but but you know like I did a show with uh, Protasio. But that was like a year ago. But you know, it wasn't an oh, artist. Right. We just we just did a long interview. It ended up being like two and a half hours. But but you know, just cool. You know, where it's where it's like just 
we get to talk about somebody's career, especially, you know, like yourself or anybody who's been in the business for, you know, 30 years or so, you, you know, yeah. you, you've cried, you've, you've worked with a lot of creators that maybe are already out of the business or have passed. And there's yeah. always, always, uh, you know, good stories and things that, you know, I mean, without, aside from wizard magazine, not too many people have spent time documenting the stuff that's <laughs> not out in comic books, um, yeah. you know, in the last, uh, you know, 20 plus years. And then we don't have wizard anymore either. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody's got to be doing this, but definitely. Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, I remember we talked about uh, cross gen, and you had. I think in the last show we had a piece of cross gen artwork. What was it? I don't remember. Yeah, my yeah, it was, it was probably a Meridian page. Then that's the only thing we worked on was uh, that's that's right. The first six issues of Meridian. So not, uh, but you know, I remember. Uh, well, we won't have to talk about cross gen. Uh, <laughs> But uh, but that's cool, yeah, yeah. I hope you do tune in when we when I have Josh on. That'll be fun. Um, Definitely. So um, so as far as uh, you know, where was the question? I saw it earlier. Somebody had asked, and I, I think we've talked about this before. Jason Ladwig was curious about uh, pages that you've done that you just are never going to let go of. I mean, some of the more memorable projects where you where the art's just that important to you. Um, yeah. you know, which which projects in your career have you saved a few pieces from that you just always want to hold on to to uh you know remember that experience from that time not a whole lot honestly yeah. the the few i have um the there's a splash page from wolverine 145 this is mm -hmm. the issue when he gets his metal claws back and it's a splash shot of wolverine in like this samurai like we full on like Linnell just like killed it and i have that like framed like in the hallway like when you walk down um so probably that and i have a another Linnell. i have a six page i'm gonna probably i don't know if i hold on to it forever but i have a six page me and Linnell did the very first um story story of the very first vampire slayer mm, cool. and it's a six page story um i want to say it might not even have any dialogue in it but like the first vampire slayer in africa really cool six pager and I'm, I'm and uh i still have that now that's like from 97 96 97 when we first started working together dang somewhere in there so um i've seen uh Lionel's pencils before i mean is it intimidating to ink his work because i mean it's it's very kinetic and uh yeah it was fun i love because he would draw but i don't know if he will i know he's working more digital these days mm -hmm. but back back then he would before he would draw the page, he would flip it over and just sketch on the back of it. Right. So it would always, like a lot of his, if you see a lot of Linnell's older pages, if you flip on the back, it's got some cool sketches and, you know, artwork on the back of them. But it was cool because I love, he, he always left a lot of room for me to kind of play. So everything was there, all the detail and, yeah, that kinetic energy and, you mm -hmm. know, all that fun stuff. But it was, you know, enough room for me to kind of go in and do my thing. And um, so I've always, he's always been one of my favorite, favorite uh, pencils to ink um so but yeah he's probably on some of that but that's most of the stuff is, is you know it's been sold and you know i was like i can't take it with me so <laughs> you no, <know>? you can't. <laughs> uh, uh, so i hold on to it and i enjoy it for you know 20 30 years and then i may let it go mm -hmm. so now you've uh but you've, you've collected a few pieces over uh you know in your time too i would assume right yeah yeah I've, yeah i've collected a few things myself i've you know i've got a few michael golden pieces Mm -hmm. Um, I got a couple of covers. Um, I got a damn page. Um, uh, a few, few other things here and there, just random little stuff. If I see stuff, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I got a little, little flat folder over here with, with random stuff. I got some Akira sales. Oh, sweet. Um, you know, so yeah, just random. And I'm pretty sure any collector, you know, just got little random things they have here and there. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, uh, you're you're into uh, you know anime and uh, uh, and that sort of thing. I mean, if you if you own a few cells, you must uh, you must have a, an interest in that, right? Or is it definitely just definitely yeah big and not, not as much as I used to be um, when it first really got big here in the states. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I remember uh, Akira was like one of my first conventions I ever went to. Akira had just dropped, and um, of course this is back in the days of the the good old bootleg VHS tapes. <laughs> and my very first Dragon Con actually was still called Fantasy Fair. This is before it was called Dragon Con. It was called Fantasy Fair. And I remember going and I had, I think, 50 bucks to spend that weekend. And I think I spent 40 of it on this this bootleg video VH test, <laughs> but it, it was worth every dollar. 
you know, it was in Japanese, couldn't understand a word was going on, but me and my buddies, you know, we were just in heaven, you know, seeing Akira in all his glory. So, mm -hmm. and then later I would read the, read the, the comics and realize, you know, I don't even know why they tried to make the movie. <laughs> I want you to read the comic because <laughs> they literally had like 1% of the comic from the comic in the movie. You mm -hmm. know, that's just how big and deep the, the, the actual manga the series goes. Um, but it's pretty. It's, it's definitely, and I still love it, but yeah, it's definitely really different from the from the manga. Just It's just more, you know, they kind of try to snip it, you know, but they really can't capture all that story and detail, you know, they had in the whole series in that, you know, what, two-hour movie? Mm -hmm. So... And my friend Ian said that uh, old school anime for the win, printing out fan subs and reading along. So, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's funny. Yeah, it's, I wasn't as big in uh, into the, the manga or the or anime stuff, but at the time, at that same time, I was like loving, you know, um, uh, Chinese cinema. So I was like going to or, or buying as many DVDs or VHS tapes of Jackie yeah. Chan films and Jet yeah, Li. Yeah. And, you know, I mean that 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 was a kind of a cool time, but you know it was hard to get that stuff. You 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 really had to hunt around to yeah, find it, or like you said, go so, to, yeah, go when to you show. got yeah fan sub stuff, that was like that was pure gold. Mm -hmm. You know, when you heard yeah you had something subbed, so yeah. And now it's just like yeah, I guess on any streaming service, I can look at a cure on Hulu now. You know, who'd have thought? Right, it's, yeah. it's it's pretty much everywhere. Yeah, you're surprised yeah. when you find it on Netflix or. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, Nope, I, I know. But yeah, back in the day, we you'd have to like go to like the museum and they would have, uh, you know, I saw some Japan, or, uh, Jackie Chan films at uh, like the Cleveland Museum of Art, you know, where they were doing just like a film night on a Saturday night. Okay. And that was shocking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's where you could see it in like 1997 uh, or 8. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's see, what is uh, Joseph asked a question? Is there a holy grail at Dex is looking for on the OA tip. I don't quite understand that question, Joseph. Uh, Holy Grail. I don't, I don't know. But you, you're, as a collector, though, you're not. You're, you don't. You, you don't really. You kind of collect things as they more of in happenstance. Like if you see something, yeah, they, right? Like, yeah. A trade opportunity presents itself. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not like this dire hard. Like, oh my God, I'm you know, yeah. If I, you know, happen to have come across something, and you know the. The, the wallet is good and the price is right and you know we, we make it we make it happen because i bought actually i bought that nam page directly for michael golden um oh, really when he had the like the last few and i and i was mad at myself because he had another page that i wanted to buy i was like ah i'll see him at another show i'll get it the next time and sure enough it was gone that that next time so i was like <laughs> i should have got it but i got the the main one i wanted so from the ones he had left so. yeah that's uh those NAM pages are hard to come by. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. His, his artwork was so solid on those, and yeah, because uh, uh, it was remember. like it was cartoony and serious at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was like I don't know how he captured it, but it was just it was just like this perfect mix, you know. Yeah, I'd love a Micronauts page. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, th I think if I could get anything, even even over some X Men stuff or whatever, I'd probably Micronauts would be pretty damn cool. He he. Uh, he, he was definitely, uh, you know, on his game at that point. Yeah. I think my favorite one is when he was doing those Punisher covers and the detective covers. Mm -hmm. well, like, oh, yeah. He was just like, he was like final boss Michael Golden at that point, I, I felt. You know, <laughs> he was just so, so good. So... Yeah, no, that's very true. He was back in the day. He was he was one of those guys when you saw him working on a comic, you know, it made you want to buy it. You know, Same yeah, thing with like Perez, yeah, yeah. Burn, or Zach. Yeah, I have uh, a binder over here with just it's a Michael Golden did a binder for DC Comics, and he drew like a bunch of DC characters like Lobo, and inside the binder, I just got all these random Michael Golden covers. I just cut the covers off. Mm -hmm. You know, and having this binder, you know, just all my, you know, Michael Golden, you know, book to just, you know, flip through an oogle over from time to time. So Stafford no. Green, I'm, he every time he comes down, he has to, to pull it out and, and go through it. <laughs> so. uh, man, I haven't talked to Stanford in a long time. But, yeah, that's uh, that's funny. You know, and it, it was back during that time, too. You know, there was. You know, like Terry Austin, if he was inking a book, that was that would almost make me want to buy it because I was yeah. like, right? I mean, and it's it's rare when you know that uh, 
that you know pencilers were you know easy to kind of get a comic book fan to buy them because you like the art too but inkers were, were a little bit you know harder to kind of figure out right or spot yeah you know, yeah like Joe Sinnott, you know, he if he was working on something he knew the art was going to be good and, right uh, right Tom Palmer, but uh yeah austin stuff i mean i would pick up i think i you know i think i probably discovered cloak and dagger because he was uh you know inking leonardi or whatever or you know okay, or, uh, yeah yeah you know just stuff like that that uh it just didn't happen that often like today i don't think i don't know time, times are just different than than they were back in the day but let me see here i saw uh, oh joshua he's when he's talking about golden he says the chris star covers right so uh, oh yeah 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 because i think he painted, painted some of those i think so, they were were they painted covers I'm yeah i think he painted there. some of those yeah yeah so because yeah he experimented like on some some like some of the conan covers he painted uh, that's true back in the day so yeah that's uh that was the time too for experimenting was was in the uh mid 80s right yeah yeah so uh what do we got here bedroom beethoven says i have a tyler stout avengers variant poster for dexter or probably from dexter i don't know is that for or from from From? i don't know i don't know it's for is he giving you one (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh man yeah i got a definitely a one of more than a few Tyler Stouts around here. So he is definitely uh, flanking the wall a lot. I, I, luckily, I've had the pleasure of meeting Tyler up in Seattle okay. um, at uh, Emerald City uh, years and years ago. He, I think he's up in Portland area and uh, got to know him a little bit. And uh, so he would, uh, I mean, he would, when he would put out his, his, uh, his call list back in the day, he would make sure I, the wife, would uh would hook me up but uh that was a long time ago so but uh but yeah love tyler's work love it love it love it That's i'm just sorry. waiting i had to stop i had to put a stop on on collecting any more of his stuff i'm like until, unless he does game of thrones or the expendables so the only two otherwise i have to i have to collect other people's <laughs> and spread the love to some to some <laughs> other artists <laughs> So, but yeah, if he does some Game of Thrones, then he's got me. So I can see that. I mean, I I, I love his stuff too. I have I don't own any of the the posters at all. But you know, when you seen them on your back wall, it, it makes me wish I did. Uh, yeah, so, those are huge, right? I mean, those are those got to be close. Yeah, to, yeah it was like twenty four uh, by thirty six. Yeah, got to be two by three, three, something like that. And yeah, I love it when yeah when when Mondo was really doing their thing, and then I I was I was like, what happened to the posters? And I heard Mondo. Somebody bought them and then they stopped doing the, the prints and stuff like that. So I was like, uh, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, it was funny. I didn't know this. Joshua says that uh, Golden told him he designed the Campbell's Chunky Soup Can when he was a designer. Now, that I have not heard. Um, everybody <laughs> has to get start, somebody has to get their, their start somewhere, right? So uh, right. if it's a uh, Campbell's uh, Chunky uh, Soup Because we used to hear, it's funny, years and years ago when I first got into comics, we used to hear stories about Michael, you know, just crazy stories. It is like it was like legend. Mm-hmm. And then one day Michael started doing conventions, you know. And I was just like, I can't imagine none of these stories that I used to hear when I first got into industry, like ever being true of Michael. Now that I've gotten to know him a little now bit, you see. <laughs> so you never asked. But him. I, I've yet to have the courage to ask him if these stories are true. So maybe <laughs> one day. So interesting yeah well yeah that's uh i'm sure there's lots of stories i've you know what you know it's it, that's what happens you know when you go out to shows or come on they were in yeah, new york yeah. and they were <laughs> they were working you know in the uh you know the 60s 70s and 80s you know they they were they had to be in new york right or something yeah, so I, yeah. I can only imagine the trouble that many of those artists got into yeah, uh, yeah. You, know, you, you hear crazy stories about wally wood and yeah uh, and gil kane and um and you can only imagine the trouble that guys like taken and you know right right simonson and yeah. miller got into you know early in the day dennis cowan they're all they're all hanging out yeah, yeah. Having a good time yeah. so yeah it's not like we don't have know how to have a good time you know the, nowadays but uh but it but it must have been it would probably was pretty pretty interesting getting to hang around with those guys back then yeah especially yeah the whole bullpen you know mm-hmm. situation yeah that must have been interesting for sure that, that is true. What is uh, Bedroom Beethoven's reply? He said, I'd, I'd trade the Stout Avengers variant poster for some OA. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what the OA is, uh, Bedroom. Uh, <laughs> right. 
So uh, let's see. So yeah, uh, uh, Jan's asking about sales. We do the art sales at the end of the show, so we're probably within the ten minutes we'll probably start them because uh, these these shows usually last like an hour and a half or so. But um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions or stuff, you're more than willing to throw them in the chat, and I'll be happy to ask uh, anything anything within reason of uh, of Dexter here. So so um, you know. It, it seems like so when was the last time you worked with Lionel? I mean, it, it, has it been a while or is there was it? Yeah, it's been a minute. Been? Um Yeah, it's been ten plus years now, I want to say. Dang. So yeah, it's been a yeah, it's been a minute. So is there uh I mean guys like that that you you know you'd wish you'd get the opportunity to work with again after uh Oh know? yeah, definitely. I played with like little one offs, like I'll because even though people post pencils and stuff, so Mm -hmm. I love to, you know, if I have time to just fool around with stuff. So I ink this. Um, actually, I think I'll show it to you. This uh, cover. But it, he penciled it back in the day. So you and got a copy of the pencils, pencils and you, you blue lined them or something? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Let's see. Oh, but this was oh, wow, sweet. shot from his pencils and I was just like, you know what? I'm going to have a little fun with that. I think you spent so a little I bit. I think this probably there. over a six month period. Uh huh. So just kind of, I would do 20 minutes here and there so wow that is uh that is beautiful man wow yeah. but yeah i love love ink and Lanille stuff but so and filling in of actually working on finishing up some uh some piercing covers from uh, our late buddy oh man really because jason would uh he would do a lot of these he would pencil and ink like the outline and then he would do the rest in photoshop so i'm going in and just doing the finishes um and this stuff is for his mother um she asked me if i could uh help finish this stuff off and then you know and try to help her out with some stuff like that so doing that um and then i got a little downtime so knocking out a few of those so and uh, it's a pleasure. I always love Jason stuff, and mm -hmm. always was a you know fan. So was, you know glad I got to work with him professionally before, uh, you know, you know fast. the tragedy. Oh, yeah. But there, there were so, but, yeah, so many yeah. people. You know, I loved his work. I mean, he was he was he's clearly you know a very well collected uh, you know artist. I mean, everybody yeah, loved yeah. him. Stuff. Super talented. Super talented. One of my favorite. Absolutely. So. Dang. That's, that was cool. uh, we got to share some studio space for a while, so that was fun. Mm -hmm. And you got, and, well, and that's fantastic. You're helping out his mom too. Doing yeah, those. yeah. So was he in the area, or you know, was he uh, mom nearby? Did yeah, yeah. He lived here. His mom lives up in the New England area. I think, uh, like New Hampshire, Vancouver, not Vancouver. Um, what's one of the most small states up there? Uh, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, Vermont. Vermont. She's in Vermont. There we go. That's why I said Vancouver. I've never been to Vermont either. I, so, uh, uh, so. But yeah, that, that 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 was awesome. Yeah, I think you know, I think if you did a few of those every once in a while and put them up for sale, I think people would uh, pick them up because um, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty pretty slick. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, that that, that was nice. That. Um, that Fury was badass. I think somebody, yeah, Marvel, Marvel fan said it was badass too. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, Alberto, who's a big uh, Ca Captain America fan, even said he, he screams claim. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, <laughs> what was the question here? Delight Thanks. loves movies. Wanted to know. She said, uh, "Where was it? Um, did Dexter uh, enjoy Stim Jim Steranko's work? I mean, back in the day, I guess." Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the 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 the, the most well dressed man that you'll ever see at a convention. Yeah, uh, that is true. He will so, never look like a hobo. <laughs> That's for sure. No, he's always he he's looks always like a mobster. Right? <laughs> Jim is. 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah. So definitely a, a fan of Mr. Serang for sure. Yeah. Well, his uh, his work back in the day. I mean, yeah. I wish he I wish he had had a bigger body of work. I'd be very, very yeah. curious to see how his work. But he left his mark for sure. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, there's you know his. Uh, yeah. Anything that he did, you know, during the, during this heyday in the in the seventies and and whatnot, uh, you know, super sought after by original art collectors, you know, obviously. And but the, those stories are are well remembered. It's just, yeah, I mean, it, there, you know, there's. It, it, I just wish there was more. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, you know, yeah, where he had more of a full career, but still, he's still going getting around. You know, he, he uh, right yeah. at the end of the pandemic, he had a gallery show in. Youngstown, Ohio, for like all, a lot of his pulp paintings, you know, his uh, shadow yeah, covers. Okay. And stuff. Um, so there was very little comic book related work, unfortunately. But uh, but yeah, it was just interesting to see because you, you, know, you don't think of because he was out of comics. You know, those of us who are kind yeah. of like straight there, you don't realize that he stayed busy. It wasn't like he yeah. was you know, sitting on his hands going to cons and selling prints and stuff. You know, he was actually painting. There had to have been a hundred different uh pulp cover paintings oh, that, really? wow. that were published there it was it was pretty amazing very um, cool yeah um let's see uh the educated sister says she loves your work dexter so thank like, you thank you <laughs> uh let's see here what else we got uh, uh and educated sister asks, want to know what uh what work have you done that you feel kind of catapulted your career to the forefront i mean was there a point in time um, you know, where Ooh. you went from feeling you were an amateur to feeling <laughs> you, you you had it all figured out, you know? I mean, was was, uh, was there a single project or a person you worked with? Probably maybe when I guess, maybe when I felt like I started getting a little name, probably when I started working with Neil, when we were working on um, Wolverine. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was doing what I like to say, especially when we worked on the issue when he got his claws back. So that definitely... Um, put my name out there a little bit, which strangely enough, that's funny. That's why I, I ended up leaving Marvel and then going in. So it was funny. <laughs> Just as so funny. Uh oh, your internet's crackling on us a little bit here. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. But, well, I'm, yeah. So, so, so it kind of stalled for a little bit there at, at cross gen and you had to, had to get it, get it back, but I get it. That's, that's cool. I would think, you know, when you're working on an X title early in your career, that's probably when you know that you made it because, you know, those books were probably a little bit harder to um, yeah, yeah, get definitely. in. Um, and we and were I'm, getting ready to move over to X-Men. So I kind of mm -hmm. walked away from that. So I think we did a couple issues of X-Men actually. Um, and then, so, but yeah, but luckily, you know, you know, we got to work together again after that, but you know, we definitely would have worked a lot more had I not gone across it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, everything it, it it worked out. So it worked out how I was supposed to work out. I would have never met Josh probably had I not went to cross gen. So mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, there was a huge promise with that, right? I mean, I think uh, you know, with the idea of uh owning your own IP and and working under the same roof i mean all, right it, plus it that's the reason why i went i was like this is the chance to maybe get on the ground floor or something potential big mm -hmm. potentially big and i was like let me you know take a chance i was you know 23 at the point at that time something like that so i was like yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go for it you know yeah, it, so, no, i mean it, it made perfect sense i mean the guys started image you know they they did pretty well and you you, you read about uh you know Jeff Johns and uh, Brian Hitch and several of those other guys doing that ghost machine thing now with their own yeah. IP. So, so everybody they still tried to get, uh, they tried to get Brian out to cross you and he he actually hung out for with us for a couple of like two weeks. Mm -hmm. I believe Brian they flew him out and he came and worked in the studio for a couple of weeks. So we got to hang out with Brian and so that was fun. Um, I'll but, have him on the show uh, not to. Uh, uh, well, I have on the show. I'm on the show on the 23rd. We are actually going to do an interview in an art sale uh, uh, next weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So if you're we'll free, ask him about his his couple of weeks at Cross Gen. They were I, I very will eventful. Definitely. <laughs> very eventful. So yeah. That's all I'm going to say. I'll let hopefully I'll let <laughs> I'll let Brian fill in I, the. I'm making a note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next, <laughs> ask Brian about his two weeks in Florida. 
if you ever have Claudio <laughs> Castellini. Claudio was there for a month. So um, All right. his story, very interesting. So but wow. you, you come oh. across Jen, you're gonna lead with stories. So, <laughs> Well, I, you know, uh, well, I'm very intrigued now. So I, I will <laughs> talk about that. Um, but, but yeah, so that's, but the thing is, I think creators are always going to be chasing that, right? You can't, you know, you got uh, Eric Larson, Savage Dragon. I mean, everybody wants their, you know, their own project, right. their own IP. I think just and, artists in general. I think in music, you see that, you know, right. I mean, that's just an artist thing, mm -hmm. you know. Have you ever wanted to kind of do your own, you know, Kickstarter, own uh, project? Or, you know, A little or, bit. Yeah, I've been kind of. I just did put together like a little sketchbook, kind of a kind of a sketchbook for inkers. So mm -hmm. I've been working on that a little bit. I did a small version, but I want to do yeah a big like something I can kickstart kind of version of that. But I just want to at least kind of test the waters, mm -hmm. um, doing something small. But yeah, definitely eventually want to do something. You know. And Josh was saying that you were his first and only inker on that. So. Uh... Yeah, that's cool. Thank you, Josh. See, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, look at Asky Jones says, "I uh, I love Dexter's uh, Dexter Dexter Vines work. Crazy underrated, in my opinion. You're a beast." Thank you, thank you. That's uh, that's that's high praise right there. Um, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> so. Um, that's uh, but that's cool, man. I, yeah, I will ask Brian about that. See, I, you know, before I do an interview with any artist, I should be asking you what what the questions are that I should be asking. <laughs> you right. Probably got an insight. Maybe uh, we should be uh, going in on some of these interviews. Yeah, you, you know, we'll, you'll be the co-host, and we'll just uh, yeah, yeah. go through and, and hit him on on some stuff. But uh, but yeah, that, that's cool, man. I mean, because. Yeah, I, I go into a lot of my interviews a little blind. You know, I do my research, but you know, I'm not I'm not going to know some of the fun questions to get some of the good stories out of. Uh, oh yeah, please please, please be sure to it. ask Josh about his his trip to MegaCon and going to Tim Townsend's uh, party. Okay. Uh, every year. So. <laughs> Josh probably doesn't want to get put on the spot, but uh, <laughs> I'll make a note of that one too. Tim, uh, I'm sure uh, Tim Townsend. You know, I'm. I you know Tim was a big OA well, is still a big OA collector isn't you know it wasn't yeah big, yeah like that's why I saw a lot of that uh, Michael Golden some of those Punisher covers were from Tim's collection like he's right. serious you know I don't know I know he said he sold a lot of his art collection but I mean he had a burn at his house <laughs> yeah he uh, uh he he was pretty you know he he was prolific I think back yeah. you know back in when I first started collecting he was on all the chat boards and things and yeah, yeah. I, I learned a lot yeah, about hardcore yeah and and he was and, you know i don't know how he did because you know he, he that was really when he was most prolific and as an inker too you know yeah, seemed like he was yeah. always got, had a couple books that he was working on and uh and yet he was still finding time to hang out in these chats with oa collectors and 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 really just making us all uh you know hate him for all the stuff he was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so. No, and uh, I see. I guess I guess you guys spent a lot of time at uh, Perkins. While you were... Oh, ah, good old Perkins. No, Josh, <laughs> that place got instant karma on on, on Josh. <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, Josh was he kind of talked bad. This is some little fa family restaurant called Perkins. I don't know how prevalent they are in in Florida. And since there were a big group of us, this was like the only place we could get all of us seated. Mm -hmm. and and taken care of before we went to Tim Townsend's party. So we went to Perkins and and Josh didn't fare so well after after Perkins. <laughs> I'll give that. Ah, <laughs> uh, when Josh uh, was young. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's he's a dad now, you know. He's yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of settled in his ways. It's uh, <laughs> Yeah, th th this will be an interesting side to Josh that we're going to learn uh, about. Yeah, yeah. Weeks. yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Uh well we're probably at that time where we can start looking at the uh the artworks we've brought for sale, right? I mean, uh right. we had 19 pieces to look at. A few pieces are from titles I think we haven't had before, so you know, stuff for us to talk about while we're looking at it. Um 14 pieces are new. We've got five that we brought from the last show and re uh, that didn't sell and we reduced the prices on those. So we got 19 pieces that we're going to look at today. Um two of the Two of the pieces in the first 14 are blue line. And I'll note it even before I show it so people are aware. It says it on the slide, but just 
in case somebody sees it, they're like, wow, they want you know, you want to know going into it, it's blue line. We I mean, nothing wrong with blue lines because that's that's the way the way I think uh, you know, I don't think it, it all all inked art is going to end up being blue line, but with just the way pencilers, you know, are overseas uh, yeah. or, you know, or whatnot. It I just, even know a lot of pencilers who will blue line their own stuff and then ink it. So right. it's just, it's just kind of the power it's becoming. So it's just, it's just a lot cleaner and easier to do in a lot of ways. So, mm -hmm. I mean, never having inked any, anything, I, I assume the ink takes to anything that's been, uh, penciled, no, no problem. But I, I see what you're saying. If they print it on there, then you know you're just working straight on the board. Nothing's right. going to feed you. Yeah, um, as long as you got a good board, you know it, it is, it'll be it'll look. And you don't have to clean it afterwards either, right? I mean, if right. you're doing it. So yeah, that's one good thing. Yeah, you don't have to erase it and clean it and do all that other stuff. So it, it has its benefits. Yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, it, it's I, I well, shoot, I think I probably own I own like five blue line pieces, and then I I have. Uh, I've probably got at least that many or even more where it's on two boards, right? Where it's pencils on one board and uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. On the other one. so it's uh, you just kind of have to get used to that as uh, you know, for us collectors, if we want to keep collecting modern artwork, uh, it's just going to be the way things go as long as it stays traditional. That's all we care right. about. You know, we, I, you know, we know, like, like you said, you know, Lionel's gone, uh, you know, digital, Brian Ballin's gone digital. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of artists that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. That used to be repped by guys, who, and now they don't—they aren't anymore because they're just not making oh, yeah. any artwork to sell, right? Lee Bermejo, right? Yeah. He doesn't—he's—he's uh, he's mostly digital these days too, and yeah. uh, it, it is what it is. You just have to kind of like cherish the fact that there was a period in time where right, you could right. collect your artwork. Definitely, it just makes that older stuff more, you know, more collectible. All right. Phil Sohn says, uh, it's nice to, nice to meet you and uh, wants to pick up some of your work one day. Well, we'll, we'll be showing some artwork in a few moments, Phil. So uh, I'll go over the ground rules on the sale. Uh, give everybody uh, who's not familiar with that how we do it. Um, I have all the artwork in hand. So if you see an artwork today that you want to buy, um, the thing is uh, there's 19 pieces. So uh, there's a, the lot number is on each piece. So one through 19. Uh, if you want to claim a piece of artwork, just type the word claim in the lot number after uh, the word claim. So claim dash one or, or whatnot. Um, a lot, you know, a lot of times people just take notes on the pieces they like. They wait till it's close to the end and, you know, maybe they go back and claim lot three or four. We don't, you know, you don't have to have the slide on the screen for you to claim it. But, uh, you know, just make sure you put the claim in the lot number. Um, if you claim any artwork today, you're going to be emailing me, Bill at ComicArtFans.com, letting me know, uh, you know, in the email, let me know which lots you claimed and, Definitely, I prefer if you put your mailing address in there on that first email. It just kind of cuts to the chase. So if I need to, uh, you know, quote shipping or something like that, I've already got your uh, mailing address. So it makes makes my life easier. Um, we prefer payments via Zelle or Venmo because, uh, or even personal check. Uh, you know, so we can avoid any kind of fees. If you got to go the PayPal route, we do charge four percent if uh, you're in the U.S. and five and a half uh, international. But uh, Zelle, Venmo, and checks are fine. Uh, with the checks, I just like you to drop it in the mail on Monday so I can get it before the end of the week because you know we want the payment in 48 hours because we like to turn the art around you know as quickly as possible. I did a show with John McRae last week and uh, last Saturday, and I had all the artwork in the mail by uh, Wednesday except for a couple people who mailed a check. So uh, so that's the reason behind it. We like to turn everything around really quickly. Um, as far as shipping goes, domestic shipping is 30 and international is 65. And, uh, you know, like I said, all the artwork's in my hands. So I handle the, you know, I, I package the artwork and everything and we use uh, Masonite. So I was just at Home Depot last weekend and, and had them cut up a bunch of Masonite for me. So we pack everything really well. It's, it's Masonite's very sturdy. And the great thing is you can reuse it. So it's like I'm giving you something that you can then ship artwork if you ever sell any pieces of your own one day. So don't throw it out. It's too valuable uh, to do that. So uh, so there you go. That's uh, that's that's the uh, ground rules to, for today. As long as uh, you know, Marcus says, can we combine on shipping? Of course you can combine on shipping. Market Marcus, you can uh, if you want to buy two pieces. I will only it will only be the uh, the one uh, thirty dollar fee in the U.S. So keeping it as simple as possible. Um, Let's see, before we jump in there, what, was, what did Ian ask us? Or maybe he's saying, I've gotten past the blue line question. Yeah, as long as they like the image. That's the thing. At the end, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it, you gotta, if, you, if you like the art 
and it's blue lined, I mean, you like the art, right? It, you, you can't uh, let let it being blue lined hold you back because, um, you know, that's just where it is. I think a lot of people draw the line on the mono print stuff. You know, when an artist does their work digitally, that's a whole other whole other story. People do collect them, you know, right. just, uh, but I think for guys and gals who collect original art, you know, you, you either want the, the pencils, the inks, the paints, you want something on it. I mean, by and large, we're not print, you know, print collectors. So buying a, a mono print of someone's digital artwork that made it into a comic. I mean, I own the comic. It's it's just like one step removed from the comic at that point. Right. So. Yeah, NFTs never caught on. I don't think did they. Uh, no, they didn't. In fact, I think they, you know, they, I think they went down in a blaze of. I don't even. I can't even say blaze of glory. NFTs. Have, uh, yeah, they. They've, and that's you know, and that's a good thing. I think the way they approached it was all wrong. You know, I don't yeah. think uh, you had to be a very wealthy. You know. Um, day trader or something to really want to even consider dabbling in it but right. you know, those people aren't by and large going to be OA collectors that are supporting artists like you and you know they it, it was a different kind of collector i don't think people people who collected original art like myself and everybody in the chat i don't think i don't think that it was i i don't know anybody that bought an nft you know right. the, uh, <laughs> except for one guy who was curious that you know and, and uh and he had the money to, to experiment and the thing he got was actually kind of interesting but other than that, I know nobody, not a single person. Because I was just like, it's a JPEG, right? That's, that's at, all it pretty is. Pretty much at so. the end of the day, but it's a JPEG registered on the blockchain, blah, 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 <laughs> all this stuff. And, uh, and and it's a one of a kind. And, you know, I mean, that was the thing. You could still say it was one of a kind. But it's right. one of a kind, you know, digital piece of art. Right. So, eh, whatever. Those, yes. And Winter Powell, we're all with you, Winter. Not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you know, that's, uh, let's see here. Johnny says that, uh, you're one of the inkers that uh, he values having your, uh, pieces that you've inked in, in his collection. Thank uh, you, Johnny. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. Well, cool. Let's just, we'll just, uh, dive into this thing and get, uh, get some, uh, it, it was always a scam says Josh Middleton. It was always something, <laughs> man. We'll talk about it. Uh, uh, during the interview. Josh. Uh, yeah, Josh. I'll let, yeah, Josh is a, He's a he's a wizard with the stories. He's mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let him I'll let him save it for 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 Josh's <laughs> time on here. I'm looking forward to it. We've we've spoken a few times, but uh, all right, let's get this thing going here. We're gonna have lot one up here to start. So this is something we we haven't had anything uh, from from the uh, the ride before. Rick Leonardi. Um, you know, this is pencils and inks and priced at two fifty. So uh, with regards to Leonardi, how how often have you worked with him? This was my only time working with Rick. Really, I've always been a fan of Rick, I, just like I did with that 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 Luke Cage, not Luke Cage, um, the Nick Fury. I've done that, you know, a few pieces with uh, with Rick. I did a, a Wolverine piece and showed it to him, and he loved it. And he was like, "You mind sending me a high res file?" I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not at all, Rick." So yeah, we both, you know, we made prints from it. So you know, I was like, you know, if you ever want to work, you know, in the future. Please let me know. So, but yeah, this is the one, the one time I've I've had a chance to work with Rick. Well, Officially, anyway. So. Well, he's he's uh he's been around a long time. I I've always he's yeah one of my longtime favorites. When I started collecting X Men, he was the regular fill in artist. Um, Mark Silvestri, when he started doing his run, Rick would always pop in every fourth issue, mm -hmm. and do an issue, and I just loved it. It was like just perfect. Yeah, that's true. I kind of forgot about that. That uh, there, you know, there were a couple of guys that would step in on the X Men runs that, and uh, you know, and fill in. But you know, Leonardi was one of those guys, wasn't he? Yeah. But uh, where was that? Uh, uh, Johnny had a question. Doesn't Leonardi pencil very loosely? Is that uh, is that true, or was it, or at least kind of the... loose? Yeah, not. I wouldn't say it was like very loose, loose. But he definitely he left me a little room to play. But yeah, everything was there for sure. Okay. Yeah, I can't say I've seen uh, any Leonardi pencils in the past. Um, you know, like on a on an uninked or un, unpublished piece. So yeah, you uh, gave me a Green Lantern page years ago. I had a plan to ink it, but I still have not gotten around to it. But you still got it. That's that's I the still most. Have it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, lot one's still out there. We'll take a look at lot number two. This is from uh, some of your more recent work. This is from. Uh, from Mandalorian. This is issue seven, page three, with uh, Georges. And um, I know we saw a couple pieces the last time we did it. Did this? So, yeah. I mean, I assume. Yeah, I think this is all the only one we didn't sell. 
So uh, no, this is a this this was a new one. This is a this is the, okay, do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this, right. this is a new so, piece. I do have a I do have one that we didn't sell last time as well. Later on, it's uh, it yeah, yeah. But with this one, uh, I mean, this is just, this is just a fun piece. You know, you get you get a lot. You get a you get a fair number of characters. You get the Mandalorian in several panels. Um, and and again, you're working with Georges, who's uh, somebody you're you know, like you've mentioned already, you're, you're really familiar and comfortable, you know, yeah. with working. So when he lays this out, I mean, is it's pretty everything's there, or does yeah, or is yeah, it, George is, and, and he's old school, so you see like grid lines, and you know he'll do some stuff in in blue pencil, so he'll do a lot of a lot of his grid work like that. Um, but yeah, George still works traditional. He may flip it over and light box some stuff, um, like certain faces through, but yeah, he still works all old school traditional. Oh, very cool. I um. George is somebody I, I don't believe I've ever had the chance to talk to. I think it, I don't think I've seen him at a show before. Or maybe if I have, I I uh, just never had the opportunity to say hi to him. But uh, you've worked with him off, often enough. I mean, I, I I should be able to run into him sometime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We do a lot of shows. I think he's in Richmond this weekend at a uh, Galaxy Con. So, but yeah, yeah, I took it off this year. I think I've done it the last two years in a row. Mm-hmm. So, Galaxy yeah. cons are supposedly pretty good. I've not made it to any of them, but um, yeah, yeah, they had a good, they good, have a good reputation. Cool. Well, we have. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Johnny says George. George, this is a nice guy. He and is. I, we'll take he your word indeed. for it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We got lot three coming up next. This is uh, page again with George. This is from Weapon X issue twelve, page six, priced at three hundred dollars. These are all eleven by seventeen as well, and. Uh, so uh, I forget what what year was this done. I should I know I'd I'd written it down. This and I don't was know. if I had to guess. This is early two thousands. Okay, so we're talking at you know almost twenty years old, if not twenty years yeah. old. Yeah. And this uh, well, this is cool. I mean, so I forget what what was the first book that you and he worked on. Do you remember? Oh, what was the first long thing ago, man. George's, I think it was some Green Lantern stuff for DC, I believe. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I know we did that Green Lantern 3D book, and we did some other Green Lantern stuff. So it was, it was in that, some stuff for... Uh, it was definitely in the Green Lantern universe. We did a lot of a lot of stuff, some Superboy stuff. I think we did back in the day. Here we go. So I actually Googled it so I could figure out when this was. It was two thousand two. So oh, okay, not bad. And we got uh, and that's that's Sabretooth. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So no, very very nicely done. So the so you've held you know clearly you've held on to a lot of things. I mean, or you've had you've had you've had things in the uh, portfolios for a while. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I got a lot of Georgia stuff. We, we, you know, we worked on Weapon X. We worked on Buffy. We worked on uh, so many projects together. So yeah, I have a I have a lot of Georgia's pages kicking about. Well, that's cool. Uh, let's see here. I saw a question pop up here, and we kind of answered this earlier, but. Uh, Collective Minds just got here. He said, uh, "Is Dex taking inking commissions?" And we we talked about it earlier. If there's anything that you have that you want inked, you can contact uh, and Dex. What is the domain name for for your uh, website? It's on my Big Cartel site. If you go to my Instagram page, is a mm -hmm. link in uh, in the bio to, and then you can just email me directly from there, and uh, ask me. I get questions all the time, um, so please feel free. Well, you can DM me on Instagram. That also works too. That's true. And you know what? I just I just grabbed the domain name. I'm gonna throw it in the chat so people have it right there. So yeah, anybody that wants to ask specific inking or you know, related questions if you want to get a commission, uh the email or the uh, website address is in there and, and Dex just mentioned you can hit him up through his Instagram as well. And uh yeah. If 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 there's time to do it, you will uh you you can take tackle them. But yeah, we're not selling or doing anything like that during the show today though. That's all. Uh, that's all on decks. Uh, so yes. Yeah, so we were looking at lot three, which was the Weapon X piece. We can take a look at uh, lot four next. I know we got a couple Pacheco pieces here. This one was from Ultimate Thor issue three, page twelve, uh, priced at two hundred fifty dollars. And uh, I know you you did a well. We've had we've had a few pieces from um, uh, Pacheco that you've inked in the past. Yeah. Um, 
And what was it like working with him? It was good. It was real good. Um, we didn't talk much. I think we talked via email because he was in Spain before we, um, this is back in the day, of course, um, before he passed. But um, yeah, real cool. I always loved, uh, been a fan of, of Carlos's work. So getting a chance to work with him was definitely uh, ticking the box for sure. So and this stuff is really fun. Really fun to ink. Yeah, he had a he definitely had a distinct style. I always liked this stuff from from the moment he uh, he broke into comics. I just thought uh, you know it was just it stood out. It was clean yeah. and um, uh, and clearly you know you look at this and you know it's a very uh, just a, just a very clean inking you know job on it because it matched matched what the pencil said. Uh, let's see here. So this is again lot four from issue, uh, issue three of Ultimate Thor, and I know we have. Uh, I think I, I jumped ahead because I think we have an actual uh, issue two page. Yeah, we do. This is from issue two, page 15. Uh, same thing, Pacheco pencils, Dexter Vine inks, Ultimate Thor, and lot five price at 250 as well. So, so two pages from the series, one from issue two and the other from issue three. And, you know, I hate to say it. I did not read Ultimate Thor during this period. I'm a big Thor fan. So I don't know why he's uh, locked up and everything here, uh, or whatever. <laughs> Maybe he's sick. He looks he looks a little down uh, down on his luck. Almost. Yeah, it's been so long now. I can't remember now. It's like I would generally read the first issue, and then after that, I'm just like, yeah, okay, let's just get this done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm working now. So, so is that true though? I mean, even uh, you know when you're inking the the story really. It's you don't you don't have to really engage with the story. I mean, the penciler has to, right? I mean, because they yeah, they definitely. Really so deep. yeah, I'll read the script sometime. Yeah, and then, um, but generally, as we go deeper into it, I will just you know, as the pages come in, I'll just concentrate on inking the pages. And I was like, oh, I can just I'll read it when the book comes out. You know? Right. Well, I mean, I guess that, you know, it does make sense. I mean, we like really like what's the colorist need to know about the story, right? Once they once it gets to them, they just got to color it, right? So yeah, uh, no, you'd be surprised though. Well, with Lucas Art, there, there's there's definitely lots of can be lots of changes. So <laughs> that's, you would that's be surprised. True. But yeah, typically you know not. But yeah, the colors get a get a lot of you know get the get the get the bag a lot of times because you know plus you know deadlines get eaten up a lot of the times and. And unfortunately, it, it gets put in on the colorist to to kind of save the day at the end. So, so what's workflow like when you're doing? Uh, you know, you're scanning the inks, and are you sending those? You know, so in the, in this case, to Marvel, or are you sending them? Yeah, on I to... upload them. Yeah, each you know, Marvel, DC, all the companies have their own servers. So, so they kind of have like a lockbox for it, right? So they you upload them, and then they they're the ones who handle passing them on to the right, colorist. Right, right. Unless it's like crazy deadline, then sometimes. You know, I ask, you know, they'll have me send them directly to the to the colorist. Mm -hmm. But um, that's rare. Usually, I'll, yeah, I'll, up, I'll upload it um, to that server and then, you know, they go from there. I'll just, you know, send them an email, you know, letting them know the pages are up. And, um, you know, they go from there. Yeah. Do you ever get into jobs where you have to, like, ink two pages, get them up there because it's it, deadlines are tight? And they want you posting pages as they get done. Or are you able to? Yeah, to I've had that. Well, I'll just say, yeah, just as I go, I'll upload them every day. Mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll, I'll put up a page. But generally, I'll do like two or three pages. Then I'll upload two or three pages, because um, I like to work on a. You know, everybody works different, so I generally like to work on a page at a time. So, right. but I know a lot of inkers will work on three, four pages at a time. You know, a lot of pencils will pencil like that. They'll pencil two or three pages at a time. You know, they'll just, you know, I'm going to today I'm going to draw, you know, people today I'm going to draw cars or or buildings or whatever. Right. Um, and I'm like Carl Story, he'll just like the day he's going to ink people mm -hmm. or the day, you know. So but generally, I'll just like one page. I need the country on that one page, finish it, you know. <laughs> but once I have that one page, I do all the tech first and then I do all my brush work. And then I'll come in and you know fill in all the blacks and then so I definitely have my own system once I have that page in front of me. So but, you go and pen, you do pens first and then brushwork. Is the brushwork mostly for filling in the the blacks or do you use the um, the brushes for something specific? Yeah, specific like as I'm inking people or anything organic mm. that I'm inking with a brush. Got it. So I do the technical stuff, things I have to do with a you know ruler and tech you know yeah templates and stuff like that. I always knock that stuff out first, 
Um, then I move on to the brushwork and then, you know, from there on. So, and then clean up, you know, I do like a little cleanup, but I do a lot of cleanup in Photoshop and my stuff you never notice unless you just really got, you know, and looked at the page close up. Right. Um, I get but it. Once, so once you got you it in Photoshop it. and you can zoom in on it, he's like, oh my God, I see that. Let me <laughs> get in there and fix that. You mm -hmm. know? So, but I know it's stuff that nobody would ever catch in, 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 in most cases. Right. Nobody but me. Well, you gotta, you, you, it's, it's your work and it's, uh, it, it's, it's your thing that's going to get you the next job. So you want to make sure. Definitely. Definitely. Um, let's see here. So, uh, what do we got next? Lot six. So we, we, this is the only piece we have that you inked by, uh, Jason Pearson, uh, their, their pencils. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. We've, I think Good we've had a Deadpool. Dead, you know, we've had a few Deadpool pages in the past and they've all gone. So this is, uh, from Deadpool four. It's page nine on 11 by 17, like everything else. And this one is, uh, is priced at $300. And, um, you know, I, w what other titles did you, um, did you work on with, uh, with Jason? Jason, I think just Deadpool. I think I inked the Deadpool cover and just this series. I think that was it. Well, that's a, that's unfortunate, right? I mean, he's he would have to be one of those artists that you would have loved to have had the opportunity. Oh yeah, definitely. And, then, and this worked out. We were in the studio at this, together at this point, so it just kind of worked out that um, he needed some helps with the ink because he inked the first two issues himself, and then just the schedule caught up to him, you know, doing everything, and uh, knocked on my door one day and said, you know, do you want to <laughs> come aboard? <laughs> and I was more than happy to to do so. Sure. So. And uh, Josh mentioned that uh, he thinks you started with your panel borders with, with the inking. Is that true? Yes. I always first? do the panel borders first. Yeah. yeah. He remembered. Uh, uh. Oh, man. All right. Well, this one's uh, this one's still available. You've got uh, Deadpool issue four, page nine, at lot six. We've got lot seven up next. That was that. I think we had one page from this once before uh, from that Power Girl tangent book. This is uh, with pencils by Dusty Abel and inks by Dex, of course. Uh, it's priced at three fifty, and I remember it was like some alt version of uh, of her. I think in the storyline, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And all the tangent stuff was like this alternate version, yeah. alternate universe uh, type version of yeah. So it was like these one shots. So all these were were part of whatever such and such tangent. <laughs> Well, it's a nice one, and Winter Powell has claimed it. Thank you, Winter. Thank you, Winter. Did you get one of the uh, other pages we had, Winter? Or was this, uh, or did you miss out on the the one that we had before? I'm pretty sure. So I think we've only had one page from this before, but uh, but this is a nice one. I mean, I you know, everybody loves a good splash page. So uh, congrats. Um, we, we love that winner. So, all right. So lot seven has been claimed. We can move ahead to uh, lot number eight. Now this lot number eight is a uh, blue line piece just so everybody knows. It's one of the uh, two that we've got today. It's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps from issue 18, page eight. Um, uh, penciler, uh, it was uh, Ken Marion. So, uh, so with Ken, I mean, is Ken overseas or is it just, just so happened that you ended up getting, um, you know, the scans from him? Yeah, no, Ken's in the States. Yeah, I just okay. happened to get Blue Line stuff from all the stuff I think I did with Ken. Um, I got Blue Line from what I remember. Um, don't know why that was, but I, it's been so long now. <laughs> well, right. It just, yeah, it just happened to work <laughs> out that way. So, yeah, yeah. Probably well, just, it was just quicker. So, yeah. Well, this one's priced at $250, lot number eight. And uh, with Ken Marion uh, Blue Line pencils and Dex's inks, you get. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it, you can't call it a splash page, but it's kind of splashy with the with the, uh, the the three large characters there in there. So it's a very nice page. And it is kind of a splash page. That first panel does actually go all the way around, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, yeah. In its own way. Um, let's see here. So uh, Bibiana is asking about drawing suggestions. Nope, not today. If you, if you have any questions like that for Dex, you can email him through his website. Uh, I'd put the, uh, to link the link to Dex's website in the chat, um, not too long ago, about 10 minutes ago. I'll make, I'll, I'll add it again in a little bit. So anybody that uh, wants to go over and ask Dex any kind of specific questions about, 
uh, inking commission opportunities and those sorts of things, uh, we highly encourage it, you know, because uh, uh, it's not just about the art that we show here, uh, you know, that we're selling through the stream. There's, uh, you know, Dex has a career outside of all of this where he's happy to take on work when, when time allows. Um, all right, so this was lot eight. We can take a look at lot nine next. And uh, this is a piece from Nova, issue four, page 13. Ed McGinnis pencils on this. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I, lo I love this page because you had to put a lot of ink on this one. <laughs> that's, that, that's what's fun about it, man. And, you know, Nova as a character, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it just it just kind of, kind of fits and feels cool because, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, so something like this, you, you how often had you worked with um with ed before because i've always you know ed's work is fun you know he i think people probably think when they think of ed they probably think of his work on hulk a lot and a few yeah, other yeah. titles but we uh, were a team for i guess almost 10 years yeah so but yeah this is fun i've never read a whole lot of nova stuff before this but i definitely like the the reboot the stuff that we did here was, was definitely fun well very nice i think uh yeah, Ed's like in my top top ten uh, pencilers. Just you know, in general, I've always just uh, really really liked his style. And yeah, it, yeah, it's kind of clean, kind of over the top. He, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely a fun fun style, definitely. So, so if I ever got Ed on the uh, the channel for an interview, I should talk to you first, right, to get a get like ten. 10 questions to ask Ed. <laughs> I don't know. He, Ed just keeps himself with his family up in, in the, in the, up in Maine. You know, he just, mm -hmm. he just a little hermit up there. So. Well, lucky him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Well, this is, uh, I, I like this page a lot and uh, they make a great team. Uh, there you go. Wesley Fields. So uh, here, here, I like to hear that. Um, so we have uh, Lot 9 still out there, $300, and uh, Ed McGinnis and Dex's Inks. And let's see here. So next up, a, uh, a DC page. This is from that Blackest Night run. And this one's priced at $300, and it's with Kyle Hodes. And, you know, Kyle's got a he's, – he's an interesting uh, penciler and uh, inker of his own stuff as well. Um, yeah, I'm surprised when I got this call. Yeah, to, to ink Kyle because I I thought Carl was always one of those guys that, that inked himself. So it was it was cool to to get a chance to, to 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 tackle it, and it was fun. So in a case like that, though, you know, a guy who does ink himself a lot already. I mean, did you just go back and look at other stuff that he had inked, or was were yeah? That's the only thing I could look at that only that I could find <laughs> that, I, <laughs> that I knew. I'm mean, pretty sure maybe somebody else. Has, but I didn't see anything. So just kind of looking to see uh, what he had done. And then, you know, just kind of went from his pencils, kind of, you know, just kind of vibe with it and, mm -hmm. and just kind of did what I felt like it, it kind of needed. So it was fun. Cool. No, I mean, I, I admire Kyle's work a lot and uh... so graphic. So yeah, definitely just stands out. Plus I, you know, I, I'm one of those guys, I don't mind books in black and white. Mm -hmm. So this would be like a perfect book if they ever reprinted it in black and white. Sure. Oh, heck yeah. No, this one. Yeah. Well, I, I think that Kyle's like Wrightson. I mean, you could, you could probably look at yeah. his work and, and enjoy it just yeah, with the yeah. inks. Right. I mean, cause there, cause he has an interesting ink style. Uh, and again, just the characterizations on here. I mean, the way he's, the way he draws the, the capes on these characters. I mean, there's, there's nothing on the, on, you know, on this page that's boring, right. Yeah, Whether it's yeah. the Lobo's muscles or whatever, it's all, it's all well drawn. I mean, it's it's cool. Um, oh, and uh, Jordan, Jordan from Hawaii, my my friend in Hawaii, has just uh, picked this one up. Congrats, Jordan. Um, Thank you, Jordan. Jordan knows good art when he sees it. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> I just sent Jordan a package. If I if we had only known Jordan, I could have I could have saved us some shipping. But uh, you know, oh well, that's all right. We've uh, I've shipped a few things to Jordan. I, I put some OEX stuff in your in the package I sent you, Jordan. Um, I guess I'll have to find something else funny to to slip into this next one. But uh, no, good get. Um, all right, so we'll take a look at uh, this next one. Now, the next one is uh, uh, Blue Line Two, and uh, this is Lot Eleven. So this was from uh, JLA issue twenty six. See uh, first page on that one. So um, uh, Blue Line pencils from Miguel Mondoga. 
and uh, Dex's inks on this one. We have it priced at three fifty. I mean, this is—I mean, it's an awesome page, man. I mean, yeah, yeah, this is fun. Miguel does some great stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I've this seen is a fun issue. Did you? Uh, I mean, it, was this the first time working with him, or had you worked with him before? No, we worked on. We did a few issues of Wonder Woman together, mm -hmm. and this was after the Wonder. Woman. I think we did like three or four issues of Wonder Woman together, and then we did a few issues of uh, JLA. So, but yeah, Sweet. fun, fun stuff. Yeah, just crazy kinetic stuff. Now, when. Uh... So he he sends you these uh, the files and uh, and you print them out. I mean that's uh, see I, I got to go back and look at the original. I actually don't have them right beside me. I, I'd be curious to see that because no, I've always I've I've actually really liked Miguel's work from the stuff that I've seen. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is a sweet page. So uh, I, I guess the JLA are in trouble on this one. But I did not <laughs> yeah, read this. So yeah. They're always in trouble, but they they always seem to pull it through. <laughs> yeah, well you got Superman on your team or you got Batman. I mean, how can you fail? You, right, you, right. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, let's see here. So um, this one's lot 11. And we've got, let's see, we got three more pieces that are new. And then we're going to look at five pieces from the previous show. So next up is lot 12. That is, uh, this is a piece we've, we've had, we've had several of these Spider-Verse team up pages and they've, they've all sold. So this, this one's a uh, Dave, Dave Williams pencils and your inks. This is from issue three, page six, priced at $300. And you know Dave Dave Williams again, a guy who's who's uh, I think his art style is just really clean, simple, but yeah. you know he's well constructed stuff. And yeah, um, David does some great stuff, great work. So yeah, this it, is a, some fun. I think we did two issues. It were really fun. Yeah, yeah. They uh, I remember you know well every one of them has been uh, uh, has been picked up when we've had them. So they're they're fun. And who doesn't like you know this with the Spider Verse stuff going on? Right, uh, right. These days? So definitely. Can't wait for the third movie. Um, I love the I first two. Uh, yeah, so. same here. But um, and and similar with Dave, you uh, was this the first time you got to work with him on the Spider Verse stuff, or had you done stuff? With yeah, him? this is the first time I ever worked. I've been we've been we have been talking for years and years. Like we need to, you know, we need to work together on something, something, something. And finally, uh, something came up and it, it happened. So yeah, yeah, this was a long time in the in the making. Awesome. Uh, well, this one's available. Lot 12 priced at 300 And then, uh, let's see, lot 13 is that uh, cover. The Buffy Season 9 number 3 cover. Pencils by Georges and inks by you. Got this one priced at uh, 750 Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys, well, you like, you know, again, you had done a bit of work on, uh, on Buffy with Georges before. And um, this wasn't the only cover you guys got to work on, right? You, you did a few. Yeah, we did a ton. We have a ton of covers we've done for Buffy and and a little bit of everything. DC, Marvel, we've done a ton of covers over the years. So on something like this with the uh, with the smoke on there, is he kind of giving you the direction on how he wants it inked or is he just kind of- Yeah, he'll you... kind of indicate it a little bit and then I'll, you know, went in and kind of try to add my thing and try to really really try to do something with it make it look cool mm -hmm. um kind of give it that shape but yeah he definitely you know kind of gave me an indication of where he wanted to go with it so so he, he's he's telling you cross hatch it not yeah uh, yeah not so, not because yeah, yeah, there, 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 there. i'm pretty sure i doubled up on probably what he put in there right tripled up if, if not if not so but uh but yeah he definitely kind of indicated kind of kind of what he wanted yeah, because we could look back at that uh, the JLA piece with a, with a fair amount of uh, smoke on there too, but done in a different style. So that's why I was curious yeah. if it was you or it was the penciler kind of giving you the the direction there. So yeah, so. they always generally kind of give you a direction, stuff like that. But like an Ed, like with Kirby Cracker, he just do like little squiggly lines and just write Kirby Crackle. You know, <laughs> and I just kind of figure it out. So I was like, all right. So it just, yeah, it kind of depends. But yeah, generally, they'll kind of at least give you a, kind of a nice little blueprint you know, mm -hmm. what to work with. Sweet. Uh, all right. Well, this one's still available too, 750 and it's lot 13. So next up we got lot 14. This is, uh, you know, this is, you know, a, a cool period. I mean, I, I had Joe Phillips on, um, gosh, it's, I think it's been about a year and a half now. But, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, uh, you know, the, uh, break into comics. So exactly. I remember he, he told me that, I mean, he, 
we we talked a bit about the heretic because we had a few uh pages from uh, uh okay cool cool yeah, we even had we even had a cover believe it or not that we sold uh, okay awesome. awesome that was because they were like in pastels or something i mean he was yeah he was yeah Joe just a, i mean that's what's great about when i met joe uh when i still my last kind of job job a uh, buddy of mine was joe's assistant and mm -hmm. after work we would go to joe's house and he would you know assist joe and you know so I got to see a you know a professional comic book artist, you know, in the wild, you know, doing his thing, you know. So that was kind of cool to see, and you know, let me know like, all right, this is possible, you know. So it made me want it even more. So from that point on, I just started doing ink samples over Joe's stuff. He was he had a bunch of it. Mm -hmm. So for a couple of years, he's like, yeah, no, nope, go work on that, no, nope, work on that, no, nope, work on that, <laughs> and then eventually one day he was like. All right, and they introduced me to Kevin Dooley um, at DC, and uh, you know, got my first first comic work. So uh, I owe it all to Joe. Well, yeah, I got to get Joe back on here. I had a fun fun chat with him, and uh, yeah, he had, he had a definitely an interesting career arc and everything. But uh, Heretic, I think he was always very very proud of. Yeah, so. yeah. And especially when I had just gotten into comics, so when that stuff was taken off, I was like, oh, we're going to take over the world. It's, you know, it's Blanc Noir, you know, <laughs> this whole thing, you know, and Jason with the body bags and, you know, all that stuff. And then, mm -hmm. then, then artists became artists and <laughs> kind of <laughs> faded off. But, you know, intentions were good. Exactly. For sure. Well, you got to have that energy, man. Or, or, you know, if you didn't have that energy and passion, I mean, the artwork wouldn't look as good as it as it did. So, uh, Definitely. you know, I, I get it. So, um, so, all right. So this one's still available, too. We got uh, over to lot 15. This is uh, from Black Panther issue 17. This is, you know, we have basically this is two pages. We have the uh, blue line inks and the and the pencil piece. So I'm showing you the blue line ink piece here from uh, penciler Chris uh, Sprouse, that priced at three fifty, and I'm showing the pencil piece here as well. So you get two pieces of art with this one, uh, and um, I know we talked about it before. How, how you know how did that work out? Where uh, you ended up? Because a lot of times the pencil piece doesn't accompany the you know the blue line, but uh, you ended up having them both. Yeah, yeah. But well, when the book was going on, because um, Carl's story was you know it's Carl's. I mean. Uh, it's Chris's regular anchor and Carl was, I think on vacation or something happened and they brought me in the ink one issue mm -hmm. and I was just getting, it was kind of, I think it was, might've been behind. So I think I was just getting the files directly from Chris and just printing them out and, and inking them blue line. And then I think years later I was at a convention and oh. I was sitting right next to Chris and he had the pages and I was like, he ended up giving them to me. So I was like, Oh, cool. Cool. So I just got to work that <laughs> yeah. out. That just shows you how, yeah, how how rare it is to actually get both. I mean, uh, yeah, because I thought he was working digital. The way I was getting the pages from him, they almost look digital, because uh, even his digital stuff looks exactly like his pencil stuff. It's 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 weird. It's crazy. He is so good. Well, no, I've so I've clean. always loved Sprouse's work. I, you know, he's he's very solid. So uh, yeah, I mean, when I saw Legionnaires back in the day, mm -hmm. I was I was a fan from that point on. Yeah, even as a Marvel guy, when I saw his work on Legionnaires, I, I thought, you know, I got I got to check this stuff out because he, he yeah. he's too damn good. I hope one day he goes back and does like a one shot or something because um, he was so good on that book. Well, I agree with you. So uh, this is 15. We got 16 next. Same thing. This is uh, you get two pages of blue line ink piece with, uh, you know, with Texas ink on it. And then we also have the the pencil piece to go along with it. Now you know the story. They were sitting next to each other at a show after the fact, and and Chris had them, so he handed them over. Um, but look, but you know that's what's cool because in a lot of cases, you know, the, uh, you know, I'm surprised he filled in any of the like the beard and whatnot. But I guess he was trying to give you indication on, uh, you yeah, know, making sure uh, where you, he didn't want anything. It's just detail like that. Chris is yeah. a machine. So. You can see right there between the two. So very cool. This one's priced at 350 as well. Lot number 16. And uh, let's see. We'll take a look at lot 17 next. And this was uh, another Mandalorian. This is from issue eight with uh, pencils by Georges and inks by Dex, priced at $500. And you have to do a few characterizations here to match uh, the show a bit. But, uh, you know, 
there's nothing wrong with that, right? You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't have yeah. a problem. George is, he's been doing, I told him he's the, he's the, the likeness man now. It's like, he's done Buffy and, mm -hmm. and, you know, now Mandalorian and, you know, we on Mace Windu and Ahsoka and it's like everything he works on is, is like, you know, it's, it's based off of real people. That's funny. I wonder if he feels, uh, you know, like, I mean, not that you know, remember how like Al Williamson got to do, you know, the, the Blade Runner adaptation or the Star Wars stuff. Uh, yeah. So, so may, you know, maybe there's maybe there's something there. Right. George is he's just good at it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so he kind of keeps getting the uh, getting the work. Right. Right. Yeah, he is. He is. It's just like it's kind of I don't think it planned it that way. I think I think it just kind of happened. So I think he's just kind of rolling with it. So hey, it keeps him busy. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Busy is good. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so this is 17. We got two more to look at. Lot 18 is next. This is uh, from Ultimate Avengers 3, page 6, uh, with uh, Carlos Pacheco pencils and Dex's inks on this one. Priced at two twenty five. dollars It's uh, a fun, affordable piece. You get, uh, you know, everything, you know, everything you'd want. In a, in a, this is a talking heads page for sure, but uh, but fun nonetheless. Get Fury in there too if you're a fan of uh fan of Nick Fury. Um but uh but again we talked about Carlos earlier. You know, your work um you, you got a few different opportunities. Were they always in the ultimate universe though? Uh I believe so. I think it was because it all kind of came back to back. So we were kind of like a team. I guess it was like a year. <laughs> we just kind of teamed up and 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 worked on a couple of projects. So it was fun. Well, very nice. Uh Let's see. We got one more piece to look at. Lot number nineteen, and this is, uh, you know, I remember th this was an advertisement of, you know, of all things, but penciled by Kevin Nolan. Uh, it was a Mastercard ad, and it's it's clear that this is, uh, you know, Nolan pencils and and, and inks by you. And uh, yeah, remi you know, remind Dave me how this happened. Yeah. And, oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, Dave David Ann in this too. So how did this come about? Remind me because I forget. Yeah, yeah, this was because um, Dave and Kevin had worked together previously on the Wildcats annual where Kevin penciled it and Dave inked them. Okay. And I guess after that, when and Kevin had this job, I think Kevin got behind and was like, well, Dave did a pretty good job imitating my inking style on Wildcats. Let me, you know, bring him in on this Details Magazine thing. And then I guess it was so, you know, so up against the, the deadline, Dave ended up calling me and saying, hey, you, you mind coming up and, you know, helping out on this details thing, magazine thing with, you know, me and Kevin Nolan, and I'll give you a couple of pages. And I was like, yeah, I'm on the way. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think I'd maybe been in the industry like a year at this point, year and some change. So I was like, sure. And, you know, we pulled an all-nighter and uh, got it wrapped up, got it done. And uh, I think I said last time, I think I, I almost fell asleep at the wheel trying to get down to FedEx to send it <laughs> That's off. Right, I remember that. And ended up taking a nap in the FedEx parking lot in my car because I was just that tired because we literally been up all night. Oh, man. So, but yeah, now the days are digital. You just scan it, send it. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. all good. No more hustling to the FedEx. But uh yeah, that's cool. Have you ever had the opportunity since that time to do any inking over uh, Kevin's pencils? I mean, Kevin Kevin's a prolific inker on his own. Yeah, yeah. Pencils, so, too. yeah. No, I wish. Uh, no, actually, I did once. Now that you mentioned it, see, I'm getting old. Um, I inked Kevin in a few pages. He did an issue of Doctor Strange, which I think is one of the characters he's he was born to draw. Oh, yeah. Um, I inked a few pages over him in a in the issue of Doctor Strange. So that was cool. Well, if you were going to ink him on anything, that would be the thing to ink him on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You actually, know? I think I inked that in Blue Line, actually. I had to, it was so up against, I think it was a few, I think he had like two or three inkers on that, inking him for a change, which is, I'm pretty sure, has not happened too, too many times in his career. Right, yeah, he, uh, I mean, we've had him on the channel a few times, and he, he was at OAX too. A lot, a lot of fun. He, he's, yeah. uh, He's a he's a gentleman. 
<laughs> yes, he is. He's the most quietest, unassuming guy you ever meet. Kevin is so, so, such a sweetheart. So, oh yeah, he he looks like he should be like uh, making you know fishing lures or something. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just, he, right. with, you know, with the with the big magnifying glass and the and the, the little feathers right. and stuff like fly fishing. You know, that's right? I think, that, I think that perfectly sums up Kevin for sure. <laughs> But, uh, but boy, man, he can, he, you know, he can pencil, he can ink. I mean, uh, you know, he's, he's amazing. So uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. He's definitely super funny. talented. All right. Well, that's, this, this is the last piece we have everybody. We don't have any other pieces to show you. So uh, I can, you know, I can run through the pieces. We, we only sold two. So we have 17 still available. I'll, I'll be posting these up on CAF um, later, later this afternoon for sale. So anybody that wants to claim these beforehand, uh, you can do it during the show today, uh, or if you're watching on the rerun, uh, rewind, you can uh, you can shoot me an email, bill at comicardfans.com, and we can set them aside for you. But otherwise, they'll be up on CAF, and uh, you'll have uh, you'll be competing with everybody else over on our website this, uh, for the rest of the day and in the weekend. So here, I'll run through uh, these lots, and uh, we had lot number one that was the Leonardi uh, the ride piece that uh, you did. It was priced at two fifty. We had lot number two that was the uh, Mandalorian page seven piece with uh, George's pencils. This was uh, $500. And the Weapon X page from 2002 with Sabretooth tooth featured on that one. George's pencils again, $300 on that. Uh, and lot four and five, both of those are going to be ultimate Thor pieces. One, This one's from issue three. The next one's going to be from issue two. Both were penciled by Carlos Pacheco. And uh, both are priced $250, lots four and five. And we had lot six. That was the Jason Pearson Deadpool page. This is uh, from issue four, page nine, priced to $300. Lot seven went to Winter Powell. Then we have lot eight. These are blue lines with Ken Marion for Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. Issue 18, page eight, priced at $250. And lot nine the, was the Nova page with Ed McGinnis's pencils. And Dex's Inks priced at $300. Jordan got lot 10. So we've got uh, the JLA page, uh, which is Blue Lines by uh, Miguel and Dex, priced at $350. Lot 12 is the Dave Williams uh, Spider Verse Team Up issue 3, page 6, priced at $300. And lot 13 is that awesome Buffy season 9, number 3 cover. George's pencils on that one, priced at $750. And lot 14, Joe Phillips, the amazing Joe Phillips pencils and Joe and uh, Dex's inks on the Heretic issue two, page four, priced to three. And then we got two pages from uh, Black Panther, both uh, consecutive pages, five and six from issue 17. Uh, you get the pencils and the inks on separate boards. And uh, this is this one is showing you the inked version of this one. And here's the pencils priced to 350. And then the other page, here's the inked version and the pencils right there. Then we have uh, another Mandalorian page, issue eight, page six. Uh, this is all pencils and priced at five hundred dollars. And nineteen, we got the uh, another Pacheco piece, Ultimate Avengers three, priced at two twenty five. And uh, the piece we were just talking about, the uh, Kevin Nolan, Dave Johnson uh, Mastercard uh, piece, priced at five hundred dollars. I made it. I did it without right. take, without taking a breath. Didn't I? <laughs> But uh, that's you know, man. It's all as always, lots of fun, and I and as, as we always do. We're I know we're gonna sell some of the pieces after the show, so I'll keep you posted yeah, yeah. on that. And thanks uh, to everybody who chimed in and bought pages and all yeah. that good stuff. We uh, we totally appreciate it. So um, so yeah. If uh, anybody has any questions, obviously hit me up with an email, Bill at ComicArtFans.com. I know Winter and Jordan will will be hitting me with an email later today, so we can get the uh, their pieces in the mail. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As always, we know you have lots of other things you'll be doing on a Saturday afternoon when the weather's starting to get nice, but uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us today. And uh, we'll see you again uh, sometime soon. So enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, guys. <laughs>